And we're live. Hey, hey. Hopefully we're live and in the right place. Y'all can let me know. Y'all let me know. I know you will. Oh, I, oh, I forgot to turn the air off. Criminies. Let it go. Just let it go. You don't think it's going to be too bad? It's loud. It is really loud. I, don't, what is I that? can't get to it now. Okay, I can get to I, it. I am literally trapped because of this. I'll be right back, y'all. Don't go nowhere. I'm wireless now. I can move, baby. Be careful. I will. I know. This was not supposed to be the case. I know. We're supposed to have your new mic all set up. I know, but someone, someone. from whom... Not me. Wonder Woman came. Someone from whom Wonder Woman came? What? Sent us the wrong thing. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Hey, Angie Champagne. I got your message, Angie. But I have to look at my schedule before I message you back, okay? But thank you. I appreciate it. Hey, Sonia. Oh, good. Thank you, Sonia. Sonia says they can hear me fine on... Um, it's warm here today. Like this weather need, I, I'm just confused. I'm like sweating all day today. Well, how warm do you think it's today? 76? Yeah, I would say probably Somewhere around there. there. Craziness. Craziness. The weather is just madness. But let my baby get all set up and then we will get started. So I figured um, it's almost spring. Hey, Barbara. I know it's feeling pretty springy here today. It's feeling kind of like late spring, early summer here today. Hey, Karen. Hey, Doris. All right. So we're okay on fa on you on the YouTubes. On the YouTubes. Hey, you guys. So I'm gonna assume we're fine on Facebook. Yes, everyone says we sound fine on Facebook. There I haven't go. seen any comments from YouTube yet, but oh, there they go. Andy and Honey just popped on. That was. I need something. I am like, I don't know if I'm having a hot flash or if it's hot in here. You don't need to comment, darling. Just let me wonder. <laughs> oh, and I'm hoping with the time change, we decided that since everybody else moves and we don't move, that we would just come on an hour earlier. That way we'd be the same time for everybody, except if you're in Arizona, then we're an hour earlier. Keep bumping the mic here. Sorry about that. No, you're fine. I'm trying to cool off. We've been running around. I decided I needed to go shopping this afternoon. So we got home like an hour ago. So y'all already know what the last hour has been like. And so we were not here last Sunday. I apologize, you guys. But we went to Tucson to go take the grandbaby home. And we thought we were going to be able to make it back. But we, we could not. The sound on YouTube keeps dropping. I wonder if that's because I'm fanning. You think? All right. Yes, Debbie, it's very bipolar over here because I was freezing and now I'm like, I'm not quite sweating, but I'm, I'm pretty like, you know. Are you glowing? I'm glowing, yes, that's the word, I'm glowing. Hey, Chris. All right. Alrighty. You want to say hi to everybody? Eventually. Maybe. Eventually. I don't know. Maybe I'm not in the mood. <laughs> David's being on rate tonight, y'all. David didn't get his new microphone, so I'm sitting here fighting with this thing that has literally got me trapped on this chair uncomfortably. I'm, I'm going to wind up moving it. I just... just bothers me you guys might get to meet grumpy dave tonight i don't have they met grumpy dave when yeah. david and i were dating we were having this discussion this was my of course this is theory according to royce i think the reason why you should date someone for a significant amount of time before you decide to live your lives together forever because you need to meet every version of that person and make sure that you guys are going to be okay. And they need to meet every version of you. You know, they need to meet cranky Roy's, happy Roy's, sad Roy's, you know, irritated Roy's. Sure. All the parts. So you can decide. I'm just saying. David is so even tempered. When we were dating, I would try to make him mad. 
because I wanted to see what Mad David like was like. I had an ex-wife that liked to do that, too. I didn't say I liked to. No, she really went out of her way to try and do it. Oh, I just wanted to see. I had to make sure that, like, Angry Dave was not going to be psychotic. All right. Just saying. You don't know. Y'all y'all hear me, right? Like, you don't know these things until you do it. <laughs> Are you ready, babe? I am. I okay. guess. Sure, why not? All okay. right. We have Peggy Otto Finnegan. Lori Scott from Northern California, Tabby, Tabby, maybe, Lori Stanley Henderson from Ohio, Lori Scott, sound on YouTube keeps dropping. I don't doubt that. We're doing our best. Um, somebody else on YouTube says you sound fine here. So. Yeah. Uh, Connie Berkram, cold and expecting more snow tonight in Wisconsin. Oh. Debbie Dorman, we have bipolar weather. Chris Schmidt, happy Sunday, everyone. Uh, Mindy Hogan Cassidy, Leanne Ziegel, Colleen's Corner, Laura Rivera from Las Vegas, Kimberly Jenkin, uh, Joby Marshall, Stephanie Norton Thomas, Tommy, is it what she told me? Is Tommy. It Tommy or Tommy? I think it's I think she said Tommy Caros from Colorado. I do not speak Spanish, so I will butcher that name. Uh, Kathleen O'Brien Hoovis from Spring Grove, Illinois. Yolanda Jones from California. Lori Stanley Henderson. Sonia Sutton. Word to the wise. Royce Irene Nachum or Nakam. Patty Hogan. Melody Clark from North Carolina. Eliza Bricker Visithin. My husband and I dated for two years before we got married. Been married 25 years. Still happy and in love. Yes. Patty. Two years is good. Tommy. It's Tommy Kiroz. Oh, see, uh, Patty Joe that. Woodard, Jan Kilborn, and Vivian Phillips from Victoria, British Columbia. That's all on the Facebooks. On the Facebook. And Victoria, <laughs> Vivian wants us to come up for their Comic Con. I would love to. Where is I, Victoria, BC, British oh. Columbia. I love Victoria. It's a beautiful, beautiful city. Oh. You would, you would, I think, enjoy Victoria. I really do think that. I'm sure I would. It is beautiful. So, uh, on YouTube, Handy and Honey, Linda Gibson from Bella Vista, Arkansas, Deborah Kissinger, and Linda Gibson says we sound fine. Redeem says hello from Northern Michigan. Are you in the Mitten or are you the UP? The Mitten. Hey, hey, y'all! Thank you guys so much for coming. If I'm gonna had- make a noise. You're making a noise. Yeah, sorry, I just had to move that. that was okay, no, you're fine. Get comfortable, babe. Well, <laughs> get relatively. There comfortable. you go. Um, hey, hey, y'all. For those of you who are new, my name is Royce Hunt Bell. I'm the founder, owner, and operator of Recycled Treasures. And the voice you hear behind the camera is my darling husband, David Bell. Um, when shopping without his phone, so I had to actually pay attention to everything you oh, were. Oh, is that why you're cranky? I think that might be why. Oh. See, when we go shopping, well, I'll first explain what you're doing. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> People are here for a specific reason, not to hear me gripe. Well, today is going to be mostly about catching up. I had to make myself a fan because I'm hot. It's about, so we're going to finish up projects, you guys. We have um, the cloche base to finish and some things to go in the cloche. We started this project that we didn't get to finish. So I figured we finished that one together. And we have the, I don't even know if we're going to finish all this tonight, but this is what's on the slate. And if you guys remember our wreath inset that we made, um, we upcycled from the lid of an old cookie tin. And so I thought we could maybe possibly get the wreath done tonight too. But we shall see. We shall see what happens. So that's the plan. And we're going to finish up some spring decor and I don't know, just kind of catch up and chit chat. We weren't here last week. I feel bad. I'm sorry. We tried, y'all. We tried. I think we kept evaluating like every 15 minutes whether or not we we're going to make it home in time. We, we did not make it. We did not make it. That's true. Are we good? Yeah, I'm just playing with levels here. Um, yes, we are good. Thank you very much. Uh, Lisa Avery says we actually had sunshine in the Adirondacks today. Good for you. Um, Jan Kilborn is in the mitten. She's not in the UP. What's the mitten? Let me th- real, real quick before you go into discourse about the mitten. I am going to. So one of the things we discussed doing was I didn't like this little um, 
it says wine brocade right here, right? So we don't want that. We want to cover that up. And so I thought we would use the, um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, TikTok. I thought we would use the crest off of the olive crest mold to put there. I think that'll be really super pretty. So I'm going to do that. And then we will, so I'm going to do this with resin. We're going to do this together because I actually did not have this in my um, stash of pre-poured molds. And so we can pour this one together. So I'm using aluminite white resin. And this one is, I wanna say it sets up in like five minutes. My work time is only two minutes. So I'm gonna get started. Um, you guys know whenever you use this resin, you use like um, equal parts A and B. I mix both of mine in the same cup. Everyone does it a little bit different. Um, these people measuring stuff with little bumps are killing me. So I cheat and I go through and I make marks on my cup ahead of time so I can actually see what I'm doing. And so I'm gonna pour 50% of A and B in the same cup and stir it. And the cool thing about, I'm gonna say new ILD molds because they just started doing this a couple of releases ago, is it tells me exactly how much I need. So I need 15 mils to fill up this one. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and pour 20 mils total. And I'll have a little bit extra, but I'll just pour it in one of these little molds on here and I'll use it another day, another time. So that's what I'm gonna be doing right now. All right, we have Redeemed from Northern Michigan and Jan G from Michigan, about 20 miles south of Redeemed. That's over on the YouTubes. And the mitten is, if you look at Michigan, there's two parts to it. Mm -hmm. um, there's the main part, which looks like a mitten. Oh. And then the upper peninsula. Okay. So that's that's what it is. So there you go. Uh, Susan Boehner, Whitmore Glazer, Glasser, Glazer, I think with one S, Glazer. You saying you used to try and pick a fight with David reminded me of what happened with my boyfriend when I was 14. We didn't date. He just walked me home from school. His friends told him something was wrong with our relationship because we didn't fight. So he started picking fights with me. I thought that was dumb, so I wouldn't let him walk me home anymore. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> it is dumb. You're right. I'm just I think saying, I just called my wife dumb. I just I'm wanted to see Dutch. what angry Dave looks like. I'm just saying. Because what if I didn't, like, what if like angry Dave was like not okay? Well, honestly, if I'm that even keel, oh, by the way, please like, share, like on YouTube, subscribe on Facebook, please share, you oh, know, yeah, you like share it. share on TikTok too. Share it on TikTok as well. I don't think TikTok can hear me, so. I don't know. Um, yeah, I think they can, babe. So, uh, me being, if you say I'm so even keeled, mm -hmm. that tells me I'm, I may be psychotic. That's my point. But see, ang <laughs> angry Dave won't come out if I'm psychotic. What will just happen is something will disappear. Oh, I see. You see? I think the guys who kind of explode every now and then are probably healthier. That was my point, baby. You just made my point. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm not healthy. I'm psychotic. I told oh you. Oh, my god. I'm in agreement. I'm a mess. Uh, let's see. Patricia Browning also. Boy, we are going heavy with the Wolverines today or the Spartans. I don't know which one you are. Uh, Michigan. Patricia Browning's from Michigan. Um, Redeem said, the way you do it allows no waste. That resin is getting expensive and hard to find. I know. It is. You guys will notice that these bottles look different from the ones I normally use. And that's why you see me pouring these into other molds because I don't want to waste anything. And also on YouTube, we have Susan Ellis up in Ontario. Hi, hey, Ontario. Susan. And then on the Facebooks, let's see. Candace Clay says it is rainy here in British Columbia. Shane Sellers is in Laurel, Mississippi. Celestine Todd, Melissa Garibay from Yuma. I heard. You heard. Because I went to a meeting of the new Southern Arizona Sports Film and Tourism Authority, mm -hmm. which is brand new this year. 
that Yuma is trying to build a film and television soundstage. Ooh, that would be so cool. That would be wonderful, but we're trying to get one built here too. So <laughs> I think it's a race now. Phoenix oh. is probably going to beat us all. They're, they're building one in Doesn't Phoenix. Does Phoenix have one? No, I don't think they have a soundstage. New Mexico has sound stages. They've built a number in Albuquerque or around Albuquerque, and uh, a number of studios are just, that's where they're going to start doing stuff. Uh, HBO has Ooh. committed to doing stuff in New Mexico and Netflix for their originals. I'm sorry, you guys. So one of the things you want to make sure when you're pouring resin is that your table is level. And I guess my table is level like right here. I want to move this out of my way so we can move on to the next project. So I'm going to wait for it to start setting up a little bit before I move it. Just trying, telling you guys what's going on over here. And we have Sharon Valencia watching. Hi, hey, Sharon. Miss Sharon. Uh, you guys see how it's turning white? Um, that's how quickly this resin sets up. So I mix it together, store, stir it until I don't see any kind of like fogginess. Um, and then I pour it. And this particular resin, I've actually grown to prefer. It's like a creamy white. It's not a white white. And I'm able to paint the surface of this resin um, without having to prime first. So even though this was a resin I wasn't used to buying, I've actually found that I prefer it. I think I'm okay to move this now. It's set up enough that I don't think it's gonna run. So I'm gonna move that out of the way. This was the base to my um, cloche, which I put the cloche over there so it won't get broken. Um, really, this is just a post. It was like a post to something. And I had my assistant cut it into pieces so that I could have like little mini um, risers. And I love the texture of it, but because it's spring and we talked about a couple weeks ago that my furniture pieces are so dark, I feel like this base needs to be lightened up. So we're gonna paint it but I have a new product that we are gonna play with together. Um, I've been wanting to try milk paint and so I ordered some products from Lexi Grinzer. So I don't have this, but if you guys are interested in this, you can get it at LexiGrinzerArt.com. Um, this is Cracked Gesso. This is my new favorite product. You guys will see me using this a lot more moving forward. And I also have some milk paint and I'm using the color to Toscana or all these names these fancy names be messing me up yeah and so i'm gonna mix a little bit of milk paint i have learned that you really don't want to mix more than you're going to use um because it's made with with milk solids and so it'll go sour so i'm just gonna put a teaspoon because i know i'm not gonna need a ton of it and mix it up i'm gonna put a thin coat actually you know what i'm gonna do i just lied to y'all i just changed my mind i didn't lie I'm going to put a thin coat of cracked gesso on this rather than the milk paint as a base. And I just want to lighten this up some. And then we're going to put a second layer of the cracked gesso on there. And then we're going to go in with some milk paint too. But let's start with this layer first. Lisa yeah, Vansell I says, Miss David last night, but Royce covered for you. Yes, I did. Thank you guys for joining me on my live last night. Oh my gosh, did you guys see me struggling with, look what I made, look what I made, look what I made. No, I'm just kidding. So you guys know, so we had our mystery, um, mixed media mystery box challenge. And so um, we basically get assigned one of the artists and we send them a box. So we legitimately don't know what we're gonna get until we open it when we're live with you guys. So you guys know all these like bright colors, I had to laugh at myself. I struggled a little bit. I think it came out pretty. It doesn't look like anything that I would normally make, but I think it came out pretty. I don't know. So I had to challenge myself and do something outside of my comfort zone, but it's good, right? Um, to exercise that. I think it makes us better when we push ourselves. Joan Volkman on YouTube. Are we still live? Yes, we are. We are. So uh, I understand her confusion because there have been times where I've looked for something that I know is live. Yeah. And I'll, I'll start mainly at city council meetings. I have to do it for work and I'll find an old one. And, and it's it, like, no, I don't want that one. I want the current one. So yes. 
it can be confusing on the YouTubes. And so. then we have the time mix up too. I mean, not mix up, the time change today. Yes, so we decided we're always going to be 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. So the only people who are really going to get confused are Arizonans. Yes. And that's liver of Nevada, or no, Indiana. There's oh, a, there's is there a, a portion of Indiana? There's a little it? piece of Indiana that doesn't oh. change either. Uh, and Hawaii, I believe, doesn't change. But I haven't seen any Hawaii's for a while. And and the Navajo Nation. No, the Navajo Nation changes. So, yes, they yeah, do. They change. But that's because the Navajo Nation goes across a couple of states. Yeah. So They that, have to make a choice. Yeah, that made sense. Okay, um, so you guys, I am mixing this really thin for my first layer. And I'm thinking I wasn't going to do texture because you guys asked me last week if I was going to do texture on this. But... Um, I've been playing with this new product and I think that I should do texture on that. I think it would be fun. So I'm going to do a super thin coat of cracked gesso over the surface of this. And it's pretty much just to prepare it. Um, I've been playing with this and this is what I found helps me get the result that I want. So I'm going to start with a thin layer of gesso right over my unfinished wood first. And then we're going to come back and lay down a thicker layer so that I can get some really yummy cracks um, and crackle on here. But we're gonna get this first layer down first. Kim Reimers Lamar, unfortunately I'm late tonight. I always look forward to your show. It always puts a smile on my face. We're just Thank really you, starting, Kim. so. We're barely starting, so you're good. Yeah. How many people do we have on Facebook? I'm just curious. Babe. We were up to 80 something. We're at 76 right now. Okay. I just, I was curious at how the time change would. I think it's, things. I think it's going to throw things off a little bit for a little while. Yeah. Yeah. Melissa Garibay. I'm always confused when it comes to the time change. Me and you both, Melissa. So thankful Arizona does not participate. You would be even more confused if you were in Arizona and you may be, I don't know, Melissa, maybe you are. Um, I don't know. When I lived in California, I remember showing up to the kids. Oh, Melissa like is from Yuma. Early. So, yes. So, Melissa is in, in Arizona. Yeah. She's in Yuma. Yeah, it's awful because now we're on Pacific time. Yes. We're mountain whatever time. And then in the winter, we're mountain something other time. Yes. But the reality is. We're Pacific time. We're either in mountain time or we're in Pacific time. And right now we're in Pacific time. Yeah. Look, I'm, I've said it before. I'll say it again. I don't care if we don't change. I don't care if we do change. I just want to join the rest of the nation. And there's a push. Right? There's a push to end the time change. Yes. Great. I'm fine with that. I think it would be harder for states that get darker earlier, though. Like, doesn't it get darker earlier on the East Coast? It does. And when they time, when you when you change time, it gets dark really early. Oh, okay. So, um, and it gets dark earlier the more north you go too so um i i just don't care i i've done a lot of work as a journalist dealing with washington dc mm -hmm. and boy that can be a real pain getting the time change you know what oh, i mean yeah i mean i have some like i'm in a mastermind and they'll schedule the meeting at like eight o'clock i'm sorry i'm not gonna be there <laughs> <laughs> that because there's a three hour difference between us yeah, and the East Coast. That's eleven AM on the East Coast now or ten AM if it's in the winter. Ugh. No no no. They do it at eight o'clock their time, darling. Oh no. You're missing the whole point no, of the no. conversation. Ain't gonna happen. I know. I'm gonna do I don't know if I want crackle. I'm trying to decide if I want crackle over the whole thing. I'm gonna go ahead and just put a coat of crack gesso over the whole thing. And then when I get ready to apply the thick texture, I'll make my decision about whether or not I want to add texture to the whole thing. And you know what? Y'all let me start before I put my medallion on. You notice how I always blame you guys when I make a mistake. <laughs> it's okay. I'll just dry this really quickly and then we'll glue that medallion on so I can paint over it because we want to make it look like it's a part of everything else. So let's see. Um, Lisa Vansell would rather not have the time change. Lee and Ziegel hate the time change. Shannon Hartle, I like the time change because it gets dark and I like the longer days. I there. That's what I'm saying. I think in states where it gets dark earlier, it's a larger issue. I guess. The the 
Because even here, like, there are times when we get to work and it's still dark outside. Oh, yeah. And, you know, we got people hanging out in the back of the building. I, I, because well, I get up did. early for work. There were times I was driving when the sun was coming up. Yes. You know, so um, the big thing on the in the Midwest and the East Coast is the springtime change. You get that extra hour of daylight. Mm -hmm. And boy, when you're a kid, that's the greatest thing on the planet. <laughs> Because that's an extra hour of playtime. Yeah. But, you know, I like I said, I don't care. Don't I really care. don't care. Just I just make want up their minds what they're going to do. Huh? I just want the entire nation to do the same, whichever it is. Yeah. And if you want to get rid of the time change, I'll I'll vote for that too. I'm okay. So we had a question on the page this week, you guys. I was cracking up so bad reading your comments. And it was a song that you used to sing when you were younger that you probably had no business singing. I put basically any song by Prince. <laughs> I had no business singing. Uh, Lisa Vansil, correct gesso, new to me, may I ask for some of its different uses? So I've been using it for texture. Um, you can use it, Amy Howard um, is the brand. And so you can use it under your milk paint to add texture, but basically um, it's, it's another texture medium, but it does act differently than salt wash. And so that's why I love it. And you guys, I'm gonna show you guys right now um, why I love it. Cause we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna do some crack a lack in this after this evening together. And so I've been playing with it and you guys know I'm a texture junkie, right? I love texture. And I found, and I should have brought my wood tags in that I've been messing with, that I'm able to create different texture using the cracked gesso that I'm able to create using my salt wash. And so um, I think it's just gonna end up being another tool in my toolkit. Um, I'm super excited. I've been practicing with some new textured finishes and I'm probably going to do, um, I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to do it. I don't know if I'm going to do it as like, um, what would you call an addition to a course, baby? Supplement. Like a supplement to my texture course, or if I'm just going to do it as a whole another course, I haven't made up my mind. So, but we're going to play with it a little bit tonight though, and you guys will see the yumminess. Leanne Ziegel, heart attacks increased by 24% the day after time change. Really? Car accidents increase at a high percentage as well. That's, I wonder what, you, are, you know I want to know why. Well, it, isn't so. it called circadian rhythm? That, that, oh, like, yeah, that's yeah. true. So I'm just going to pop this out now, right? Super easy peasy, lemon squeezy. You guys see that? I really do love, I mean, I use the clay sometimes, but... Yeah, y'all know I use resin most of the time. So I have these extra pieces and I'm going to lay them on the table and let them finish setting up so that they set flat. And then those will go in my bins and in future, if I need some extra little pieces, I will have them. Uh, Candace Clay, will Crack Gesso also work with chalk style paint? Yes. I have been using it in combination with my chalk paint. And Kathy Dixon just came right behind and said, is it only for milk paint? No, it's not only for milk paint. It's just, I, I started my journey. The reason how I found Amy Howard was I was looking for a milk paint to try because I was looking to be able to create a different type of texture. Um, and I found this brand, but um, it does work with chalk paint. And we're actually gonna do some stuff together today. I'm turning on my glue gun because I think I'm gonna use the glue gun and my um, quick and thick together on this piece because I want it to set up fast so we can move forward. So I'm gonna let that warm up a little bit. But you guys see me warming up my piece of resin and it's just because I want it to wrap really tightly around. Um, and so I'm warming it up so that it becomes more malleable. Lisa Vansil says, I want to try crack gesso, especially with a Royce course. I, you know what? I know I'm going to, we'll see you guys. I'm working on something, um, but I'm not ready to talk about it just yet. 
<laughs> Paula Takagi is watching from Tucson. Hey, Paula. So before we get into the music that's inappropriate, and I, <laughs> I have two. I have oh. two that I promise most people aren't even thinking about. Oh. Um, two stories. Um, one for each of us. I'll go with mine first. So I was in uh, a big box store um, that my boss hates because it's not a local store. Okay. Um, let's just say there might be some walls there. There might be walls, uh-huh. a wall at this mart. We'll just say that. Oh, okay. I got you. All right. I'm a little slow on the uptake. But I, I think all right. I got you. Okay. Um, and uh, I was checking out. And a lady, don't tell my wife I was in the self checkout. Oh, I was, I was in for like two things. I know, I know, but they only had one checker. I should have had my glue gun. They on. didn't have like two or three because normally I go if there's two or three, I'll just wait. That's how they try to strong arm you. And I know, it. but it was just I was there for like one or two things. It was, you know, and uh, this lady came up to me. And she said, excuse me. And I thought maybe I'd cut in front of her or something. Oh, yeah. I, I just felt awful. I was like, oh, my gosh, what did I do wrong? And she came up. She goes, I just wanted to tell you, I enjoy listening to you on your radio show. It's so nice to have someone say something nice to you, isn't it? It really was. Because usually it's, you're you're a liberal pinko or you're a conservative <laughs> jerk. and Which I like because that means I'm kind of even keel. Yes. Um, but... It's usually, hey, I disagree with you. And I had just the night before had a good 45 con minute conversation about why I'm wrong about liking solar power. Yes. This person really wanted to tell me why I was wrong. Um, and he did. And that's fine. You know, I don't I don't mind if people disagree with me. That's of course, Ooh. that's what I, I enjoy. He's a contrarian. He likes it. I do. But it was very nice. And the other one was Tucson. The reason I'm bringing this up is because we have uh, uh, who's watching from Tucson. Um, we have Paula and we were in. Oh, yeah. A we place were of, the of will. Oh, you're just going to come out and say it. Okay. Oh, sorry. Well, I showed the <laughs> No, album. your fans are Goodwill fans. That's yes. okay. Well, we were, we don't, we're not, I'm not sure if we're fans. So this was last weekend when yes. we were supposed to be live. Yes. And instead. Well, when we realized we were not going to make it back in time. Right. Because we our grandson's mother was working and it just. We've, de we've decided if we're taking the grandbaby back. We're it's just, it's not a live night. Yeah. Because we just can't do it. It's it just, there's no way to do it. Um, and so we I'm just, just real quickly while you finish your story, I'm roughing the back of this up a little bit, you guys, so I can make sure that I get good adhesion because this is like perfectly smooth. And I don't know, I'm just concerned that it may not adhere well. Okay, carry so, on. So since we were there, we decided. Of course, I went thrifting. Somebody went, went picking. <laughs> So we went to the bougie Goodwill. Yes. And then, but first we went to the good Goodwill. Yes. And Which you don't have to tell them where it is. I'm not. I'm just saying good and bougie. Yes. And uh, you asked me to film while we were there because you wanted it for some B-roll. It's called B-roll. Yes. Um, which is just the, the stuff you see in a montage where it's not something actually happening, just the stuff... Yes, I did a TikTok you know. already with some of the footage. Okay, so so I was filming that. I was really trying to not get anybody else in it, but it turned out there was a viewer. Yes, it was really cool. So now you get to tell the story. Oh, I didn't she talk was to really her. nice, actually. Um, and she was telling me, I'm hoping you guys, her um, grandfather is an upholsterer, and he has been since like... I mean, he's 90, so he's been doing this for a long time. So I'm hoping to be able to do a, a special segment at his shop. We'll see what happens. But yeah, she was really nice, and she was there picking. And so there were two chairs. You guys, I have a million chairs, 50 million, 50 11, as Sherry Martin would say. I'm filling this well with a little bit of glue because it's kind of inset, and I'm feeling that that's going to cause me some problems. So I'm just going to kind of fill that with glue. Um... And she was really nice. I don't know. But anyways, I'm hoping we can go to her grandfather's shop. You had a nice long conversation. We she did. loves to do this too. 
So we're both picking. There were two chairs, you guys. I am such a dork. I wanted to bring home both chairs. I knew I had no business bringing home both chairs. She bought one chair and I bought the other. I felt so good about that. Both of them found a good home. I don't know how I'm going to fix the chair I bought. I know. I was worried. That one, that, that one leg wanted to go out. Oh, you I You sat on it and it wasn't a you thing. That was a chair thing. My husband's panicking. He thought I was going to fall on my arse in the store. I put a little bit too much glue, yeah. I got glue coming out, so I'm gonna just grab that before it dries because I don't want to mess up my piece. Shane Sellers, what's the name of the product again? Crack Gesso. Yes, you are correct. Yes. Jeannie, uh, Jeannie Yell Heinrichs, Henrichs, excuse me, hiding the honey hole. <laughs> exactly. No, it's the one over, um, it's the one in Vail over off of Houghton. That's my personal favorite one. I usually find stuff in there. The bougie one is the one on Broadway between, um, I don't know, Kolb somewhere between Colb and, and Houghton. No, Colb and, um, oh, we just turned down that to wind up going to oh, yeah. Cas Caso something or something like that. Casa. Yeah. Um, but I found a lot at uh, that one yesterday too. Well, I mean, not yesterday, but when we went. Yeah. I'm picking all this extra glue, y'all, because I don't want to have it be, I guess it won't matter, but. Melissa Garibay, what area are you in? What is your radio show? I am in the Safford area. You cannot hear my show live. We only broadcast. It's a, it's a low powered AM uh, that only broadcasts basically to Graham County, which is on the other side of the state from Yuma County. So you, you can't hear it live. You can hear me. Um, we put my show up as a podcast on our website, which is GilaValleyCentral.net, but it's very local. So I don't imagine most people would, well, I don't know. See, tomorrow we're going to talk about the Arizona tax credit, yeah, which applies to every county. In we're, Arizona. We're going to talk with uh, CECAS, which serves seniors here in Graham and Greenlee. Yes. But realistically what we're going to talk about applies to every county in arizona um but come I april be cute right you guys uh starting at the end of this month and into early april you're going to be talking a lot more art comics and cosplay oh yeah because my event royce had her event last summer now it's my event <laughs> You guys hear how he says that, right? Arizona I'm Fan sorry. Fest is coming April 14th and 15th to Safford. It is a comic book convention, but the reality is it's more than comic books. It's cosplay, it's gaming, it's anime, it's art, and comic books. Yeah. It's it's a little bit of everything, collectibles. Um, we I'm got, anticipating a lot of manga, right? The local kids like that a lot. That's what the local kids like. I don't know who's bringing mm -hmm. a lot. I'm hoping... Yeah, but we the, shall see. manga and anime is huge here and we have nobody supplying it Yeah, other than our library. So the library will be there with, with their manga books and stuff. Um, so that's April 14th, 15th. Please come visit us. I would like that. That would be cool. I would really appreciate it. And they're artists. You guys are all artists too. It's just maybe not the same kind of art that they do, but art is art. It is. Okay, I'm going to set this aside and we'll let this dry and we'll come, we'll return back to it. And I just put a layer of the, of the crack gesso over this so our surface will be consistent, right? So I'm going to set this aside and let that dry while we circle back to our, my, now my glue gun is like spewing glue everywhere. Um, let me hit this a little bit. It's not quite dry. You guys see? Your pliers. Oh. Okay. Uh, Deborah Fusile, Fus, Fusilier, Fusilier. Are you still using the cracked gesso? I am. So all the white that you guys see me using around is just cracked gesso. Um, I want to point out something on this piece. You guys hear us talk about tannins and how they can bleed through on a piece. You guys see that like orangey brown that's coming through on this piece? Those are tannins. That's what I'm talking about. And this is why you guys hear me preach about um, priming before you start painting like your furniture pieces, because you can have a gorgeous finish. And these tannins are showing up right away. But I've had times where 
um, in my early days, when I had a piece, it was like two weeks later um, and they were pink. I was so distraught. It was so sad. I was so sad. Kathleen O'Brien Hoovis, I don't understand what cosplay is. Can you explain it? So, cosplay is dressing up like your favorite characters. It, it, yeah. Most most at these conventions do anime or comic books or, or movies, comic book based yes. movies. But it can be anything. It can be somebody from CSI. It can be Magnum PI. Yes. It can be whatever you want. And you're there just to have fun. So mm -hmm. think of it like Halloween. But the difference between cosplay and costume contests is costume contests can be anything. Heck, I bought a Superman t-shirt and I just put it under a white shirt and a blue suit with a red tie and I opened up the white shirt and I was Clark Kent yes. changing into I Superman. I thought it was like a really good costume just because you were working that day. Right. So it was like, it was a... It was, in a, it was a utilitarian costume. Yes. Um, that's when I was hosting our first convention. So, but it can be anything. But cosplay is you made the costume. Yeah. So, you know, you're putting in the effort. You're cutting out the foam. You're sewing the fabric. You're, you're really putting effort into it. Yes. And not everybody makes their own, but those are my favorite. Correct. But you've got to make a good portion of it somehow. Yeah. Like one guy made Thor's chain mail using um, oh, yeah. tops from the soda from can. soda cans. That was yeah, that and his was like fire. Like it was really good. Yeah, he just he linked all these you know how sometimes somebody will ask for the pop tops from soda cans for a charitable donation? Mm -hmm. Like they, the Ronald McDonald house. Yeah. Yeah. They turn that in and they, they turn it in for recycling and they get cash great for everyone he used those to make chain mail and it looked like chain mail it was it great you know uh, what i learned about that what so for ronald mcdonald they really don't make a lot of money off of those pop tops it's a marketing strategy it's bringing awareness well it's engaging you i mean think about it so for a lot of charities a lot of people feel helpless so they won't do anything but so you take those pop lids and then you get on their email list and yeah. then you become part of their Part of yeah. their donation group, and that's great. Yeah. No, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I mean, I think it's kind of genius. Yeah, one of our local churches do, does it with their youth group. Yeah, and the senior center collects them, too. Do they? Okay. Yeah, and the seniors take them down to the Ronald McDonald House in Tucson periodically. Yeah, so nothing wrong with that. So that's cosplay. Cosplay can be anything you like. It can be a mashup of things. So you can take two of your favorite things and put them together if you wanted. So My if you, favorite one is... Um, you can make Magnum P.I. be Wolverine or, you know. Well, my favorite one is... What's the red guy? The terrible one? Deadpool? Yeah, the Deadpools. Like, how did Deadpool get chosen to be, like, modified? Because Deadpool's silly in the comics. Okay. And acknowledges he's in a comic, so you can do anything with him. Like, we go to Comic-Cons and you'll see, like... We went to Tucson Comic Con one year, and I swear there had to be like what twenty Deadpool's. Oh yeah, and they were all walking around together, but they were all like different. I mean, there was a Bob Ross Deadpool, there was an old lady Deadpool, there was a. I mean, I don't know. Like, I thought it was fun. Um, we've seen uh, steampunk superheroes. Yes. So, uh, steampunk Catwoman, Poison Ivy, yes. Harley Quinn. Dang it. You guys see me keep going back and forth here. So, I'm trying to get this to be the perfect consistency. You want it to be kind of like, you know that marshmallow stuff that you buy in a jar? Fluff. Yes, the fluff. That's the consistency that I found that I get the best results with my cracked gesso. Somebody asked if this is the same as white gesso. No, this isn't. This is different. Um, the white gesso that you buy has this stuff in it it has gesso in it that's why you get like a super matte surface when you use it but this is actually the stuff that they put in the white gesso that makes it matte uh let's see um my favorite from the last conventions we went to this was i think a couple of years ago remember those two young men that um i guess you would call it cross-dressing because they dressed as female characters but they didn't, but they manned 
Yeah, it was like the male version. Of yeah, the, the male version characters. of those characters. It was really, really cool. They yeah. did uh, Jubilee and uh, Emma Frost from the X Men. Yeah, and and it just looked so cool. And they put their own spin on it, and they bedazzled the heck out of it, and it was just great. So I like cosplay. Um, it's a fun way to show your expression. Yeah, and so. for kids, it's an extra Halloween. Yeah. So I just wanted to show you guys, like, right? So it looks kind of like, what do you call that stuff? Fluff? If yes. you get it too thick and tacky, um, I feel like it's too condensed and you don't get as many cracks. But this is the consistency that I love. And so I'm going to go ahead and put this over the top of this um, thicker. And I'm going to go ahead and coax it with my, um, my heat gun once I get it applied on here. And I'm going to do one side at a time so I don't have to get it all over my hands. Uh, Melissa Garibay, Rocky Horror Picture Show, started it all. Um, yeah, I, it could be. I wouldn't say no. Cosplay's been part of comic conventions forever. I think the thing is that, that comic conventions used to be um, comic an books. underground thing. I know. I'm just saying it's become mainstream in the last 10 or 15 years. I mainly mainly because that, of Hollywood. Yes. But prior to that, it was pretty... It was comic book fans. Yeah. And it was underground. So a lot of people didn't see it. So I think people think it's a new thing because they didn't see it as much. Unless you lived in the cities with big conventions. Yeah. So San Diego, Chicago, New York had big conventions. And there were always news stories. And, you know, they would report from the conventions. Yeah. Um, but now you get conventions everywhere. Somebody said, isn't there a big one in San Antonio? Probably. Or Austin, excuse me, not San Antonio. There's a convention in every community. Every good-sized community has a convention. Yes. El Paso has a fantastic convention. Yeah, theirs is really popular with the vendors, too. With, with And with cosplayers. Their cosplayers are good. Yeah, they are. They're really good. So, anyway, April 14th, 15th, if you feel like having fun, come to Safford, Arizona. And you can check us out. And if you stay for the week, then you can go to El Paso. Because El Paso is the week after. So... Uh, let's see. Will you make, Beth Ray, will you make a condensed version of this live? Um, yes. I'm going to try to do that. I didn't do one for the last live that we did because I didn't finish anything. So what I'm probably going to do is take that live that, where we started these projects and condense it with this one. Um, you know, so you guys can see the projects from start to finish. I actually will probably make different videos for each project at this point. Cause that's a lot of footage to try to get into one video. Thank you, Deborah. It's Fusile. Fusile. Uh, Redeem, can you get Craig Gesso in a retail store? Um, I'm sure you can. I just don't know where. Marty Hardy, what are you playing with? I am playing with Craig Gesso. And so I'm going to show you guys up close in a few minutes because it's already starting to crackle. And so I'm actually creating a physical texture, right? For those of you who've taken my... Um, uh, patina course you guys know what I'm making reference to and for those of you who took my who've taken my courses we are working on going in and um, I'm always trying to improve things so we're going to go in and improve them and like break the videos down into shorter like snippets for you guys so if you go in and it looks kind of weird because you're a VIP and you have access for a year don't freak out. It's just us meddling around in there. Um, we're going to break each of the videos down to make it more consumable. And I don't know how many products I'm going to make it to. We're at five. Is it seriously 552 already? Yes, it is. What the Hades? How did that happen? Uh, Sarah Boehner, Whitmore Glazer. I've thought about going to a Comic-Con only because my dad was a cartoonist. We had some Ooh. of his work in Captain Marvel, Captain Marvel Jr., Marvel family, in the 1940s. I would love to see his work. His work was not the superhero stuff, but the humor filler pages. I seldom see any Golden Age stuff in comic book stores, although I do find it online. You are 100%. Yeah. Um, it's to the point now where even I've seen people sell literally one page of a Golden Age book and get hundreds of dollars. Oh, wow. Here's page 13 from Mary Marvel, and it'll get four, five dollars $500. I've got, two, I've got two old 
Golden Age books. I've got one Captain Marvel, one Marvel family. They're late in the run. So who's your who's your father? I'll look to see if I've got his work in those books. Oh, yeah, because you've got a collection. Yeah, is your dad still around, number one? Because if he is, I would love to talk with him. Uh, heck, I'll have him on my show via phone. I would love that. So I'm going to try to show you guys. You guys know how hard it is to show texture. Can you guys see the crack -a that's happening? crack -a It's a crack -a -lackin. I'm trying to find my camera. That would be helpful. So it's like cracking in there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm even going to go in and kind of knock some of it off because I want even more texture. Um, and so I'm actually going to like, and it comes off in little chunkies which I like. So, uh, and then once I seal it, it's not brittle anymore. So like, I'm going to get it to where I want it and then I'll go in and seal it and it won't be brittle anymore. So but you have, guys can see that, right? We have two crack gesso questions. Shane yes. Sellers, why do you like the crack gesso rather than some other crackle product? I, so it's not a matter of liking it better than something else. It's just another way for me to create a different texture. So this doesn't just crackle my paint. So like sometimes when you use a crackle agent, like you can use glue, right? And it's gonna make your paint crackle. The crackle that you get here, it resembles the crackle that we love, like the fine line crackle. It resembles that kind of a crackle. I feel like the crackle that you get with the glue is really like straight, it has like striations. Um, it's different and it doesn't look like something that I would see right, you know, in a vintage piece. I feel like the crackling that I get from this product resembles what I would see in a real um, piece that was, you know, older. Um, and it's not an, an issue of preference necessarily, it's just different. So I'm still gonna use my salt wash, you know, I'm still gonna use my other crackling agents. This is just something else and I'm getting a different result. And I'm probably, honestly, the pieces that I've been playing with have been a combination of um, the products that I was already using and this one to create really cool, I cannot wait to share this with you guys. I've been working, um, I've been playing with it. And so I'm gonna share like with you guys, but this is just kind of, these. I've decided that I wanted these products to have um, this finish. And even if I had gone with the black underneath here, then how cool would that be? Because you would see that black peeking through those chunks there. Deborah Fusile, uh, do you have to use heat for crackle? I don't know if you have to use heat. I do. I found if I let it um, dry on its own, that it doesn't crackle as much, honestly. And so I did. I have found that kind of. Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Gives you what you want. Coaxing it with the heat oh, gun. Sorry. No, I was I'm, reading and half hit listening. I'm sorry. No, you're fine, baby. Thank I you. I was a bad husband. Were you a bad husband? I you was. were never a bad husband. No. You guys should see my husband in the store. He's so nice. I only ran into two people at the store, though, that yeah. I ended up talking to. For an hour. Well, I hadn't seen Anita in a while. Ah, long that's time. okay. It's all right. Uh, Carolyn Holly Keller, is that what is considered chippy? Yes, it is chippy. It's chippy, it's chippy and crackly. Crackly, if that makes sense. And Lisa Vansell asks, can one pay to extend a VIP course? Um, once, so usually you guys, oh, to pay to extend your VIP? Because you get, oh, what, a year for a VIP? a year, So yeah. I'm guessing Lisa I wants. I haven't closed down any of the courses yet. I'm terrible. The people who took my decoupage boot camp. I don't know. I think I finally pulled that one down. Um, so right now you're okay? Yeah, you're fine. Okay. I haven't closed. I'm horrible. I'm terrible. I need to get, actually, I hired a VA finally, you guys. Anybody who took the stencil lab course, I owe you guys an apology. I want to officially apologize because I recognize it was a bit of a hot mess. A lot of it is just the technology and I was trying to do it fast. So I've hired somebody. So you guys do not have to deal with my hot messness anymore. So it's not Boehner, it's Howard Boner. When Bow, Bowner, excuse me. Cause she said it's like a tree bow. 
Oh, okay. So when the bow breaks, okay. So Howard Bowner, and she has some issues of his Marvel Comics work. Oh, okay. I didn't know he did Marvel work. Ooh. But I did not like Marvel's comedy books. So if he did any of the romance or comedy, I wouldn't have seen it. The only one I would have seen is Not Brand Ech. If, if he did any work for that. For what? It, it was a book called Not Brand Ech. Oh, okay. Because they would refer to each other as the distinguished competition that was DC or, you know, our marvelous competition that's Marvel or Brand X. They never refer to the, each other by name. Uh-huh. That's back in the days when you didn't. Now they all do. Oh, Everybody, yeah, you know. they all do it. Now, I yeah. remember when you couldn't do that. I mean, even through the 70s, you couldn't mention a product by name. Well, it wasn't you couldn't, you just didn't. Oh, is that what it was? The philosophy was, why give them oh, that's promotion? True. Why promote them for free? But then somebody figured out, well, I can just say I'm better than them. Yeah. So, Pepsi, I'm better than Coke. Oh, no, 7-Up's better than Sprite, you know. Everything's better than Tab, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Or Diet RC. <laughs> oh. All right, we're talking about, uh, we haven't for a little while, uh... In a, uh, incredibly inappropriate songs that you sang as a kid. Oh, my gosh. Um, somebody was talking about, here it is, Leanne Ziegel. Uh, older Sisters by 11 and 14 years. Not sure of the title. Lay me down in the tall grass. Let me do my stuff. It is a Fleetwood Mac song. I'm trying to remember which one it oh is. Oh, my gosh. Uh, second hand, second hand Blues? Second Hand News. Second Hand News, I believe, is that song. My mom had a cow. I was singing it at four years old. Oh, my gosh. Nobody had a cow when I was singing those songs. They didn't say anything. Uh, all right. Lori Scott says White Rabbit. Yes, absolutely. It's about taking drugs. Oh. That's like the Yellow Submarine. Isn't that one about taking drugs, too? No. But, I mean, everything, I everything from Rubber Soul on is considered a drug song by the Beatles. Uh-huh. But... They've had interviews where they said, no, we no. just, we were trying to do a nursery rhyme. Oh. I, I was trying to do something that, well, we were listening last night. I was trying to do something that sounded like Wilson Pickett, you know, but yeah. you can take into it whatever you want. My two are Gilbert O'Sullivan, Claire, and Benny Mardonez, uh, Into the Night. Both of those are I, Into the Night, I think, is a beautiful song. but When you start listening to the lyrics. Oh, my gosh. No. 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 Both of those are songs about adult men in love with young, underaged oh, women. Oh, no. And Into the Night starts with, she was just 16 years old. Now, that's different from, you're 16, you're beautiful in your mind. Yes. Which, well, maybe he was 16. No, he wasn't, though. Not I mean, the, but maybe he was singing from a perspective of a 16-year-old. In the song, he acknowledges, okay. I'm too old for her. <laughs> okay, I was just trying. And baby. why don't they understand our love? Oh, no. Oh, no. no it no, is no. such a, but it's a beautiful song. That's the sad part. It's, it's a really beautiful song, but oh, is it inappropriate. Claire is, <sighs> you can go two ways with Claire. He's singing about, a little one who says, oh, I'm going to marry you one day, Uncle Ray. And, you know, is he just babysitting? But it's creepy. Yeah. It's a creepy song. Yeah, it's no way on. Mm. I want to see what some of the people are putting on there. I'm all trying to see. Debbie Newton, Second Hand News. Thank you. Shannon Booth, every Madonna song. <laughs> right? Oh, I was singing those really loud. We were talking about that. In middle school, I had like 50 million bracelets. Because between Madonna and um, Cindy Lauper, you know. Kathy Hess, I'll never forget getting my face slapped for singing along with Elton John's. I'm going to say it. We're live. The bitch I is know. back. Oh, okay. Just uh, say it once, though. I don't want to yeah. get flagged by no. Facebook. But that's the song. If it wasn't over and over, that's literally the chorus. Oh, over and over again? Over and over oh, again. Oh, my. And the fact that 70s radio played it is kind of surprising. I wouldn't have thought it. Today, radio wouldn't play it. 
Maybe was it Shock Jocks or everybody was playing? No, everybody was playing. It hit oh. the charts. I had the 45. So you guys see I'm kind of scraping it to encourage it to chip off in places because that's what I want. But I would just get a crackle finish and we're going to go over it in a few minutes and you guys will get a better sense of it because we're going to add some more colors. I guess we're going to just work on this today, huh? Dang it. All right. Susan Glazer, thank you. Judge Smudge, Dizzy Daisy, Headline Harry in the 40s. Okay. So I'll look through my copies to see if they're in there. Um, all right. I will look for that. Thank you. Corinne Godfrey, boom, boom, boom. Let's go back to my room. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. I'm not seeing it. I, I don't know that one. I know boom, <gasps> boom, out what? goes the lights. Oh, this one was just so, it was, it was, yeah. I remember that song. Okay. Let's go back to my room where we can do it all night. And it'll make you feel right. Uh, Melissa Garibay, what about the one that says watching little girls in the park? I think you're talking about... Um, Oh, it just, it's on the album Thick as a Brick. Um, Jethro Tull. Um, oh, what's the name of that song? Da, 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 da. You know what I'll say? Um, watching Little Girls with Bad Intent. Yes. Oh, it's, my gosh. Um, That's horrible. No, no, no. But it's about a bad person. Oh, okay. Um, I can't think of the name of the song. But it's Jethro Tull. Yes. Not running down his nose. Yeah. Ew. Petty Hogan, Yummy, Yummy, Yummy is a bad song. <laughs> is it? I don't know. Yummy, 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 I Got Love in My Tummy. No. I mean, it's a it's a pop song. I know. Just think of that. Think of that and you're a woman and sing that. Just saying. It, it could be inappropriate. I mean, it could, but... I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I think you're having my babies way more... We, we were looking at that song the other night. Oh, my gosh, what a horribly misogynistic song. Oh, that's, yeah. Yeah, it's not inappropriate. It's just misogynistic. Uh, Deborah Booker, all pink songs. Uh, pink? Yeah, I don't, I don't know any of pink stuff. I just I don't. I always felt like pink songs were empowering. Of course, I don't remember any of them the, off the, the top of my head, though. The only one I know is a remake, which is an inappropriate song that hit the charts, Lady Marmalade. Oh, yeah. Somebody put Lady Marmalade on there. I oh, did earlier. they? Okay. Aqualung. Thank you, Jane, Jean Higginbotham. Yes, I could not remember that. Uh, Corinne Godfrey says that's Paul Lakakis. Or Lakakis? I don't know. Everybody's telling me Aqualung. I just forgot. <laughs> I knew what album it's They're on. They're trying to help you out, baby. I knew, I knew the album. Patty Hogan says, look at the lyrics. All right, I'm going to have to now. And that's the thing is, sometimes we just remember or we just hear the um, the main chorus and we don't you know, like, listen to the rest of the song. I want to say they sang, they, they did that song on the banana, uh, what was uh, the, the banana splits? Didn't they do Yummy Yummy? I remember seeing it on Saturday morning. Right, hey, no. Lindsay, I don't know. No, I really want to look it up. Now you're going to look it up. Are you coming off of Facebook? To no, no, up? no. I'm, I'm still there. Yummy, yummy, yummy lyrics. Okay. I got love in my tummy and I feel like a love in you. Love, you're such a sweet thing. Good enough to eat thing. And that's just what I'm going to do. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> Who, who told me to look at the lyrics? Uh, Patty Hogan. Patty, you are 100% right. I swear I heard that on a Saturday morning. I could have sworn I heard it on the Banana Splits. I don't know. That's like... Um, you may have. I mean... Because it was a poppy tune. Yes. Another one that's... It's not a bad song, but it will throw you off. There are two. Um, Red Rubber Ball... Red Rubber Ball... Mm -hmm. is this upbeat happy song mm -hmm. until you hear the lyrics and it's like yeah I just got dumped and my life is over oh. and, and the other one is Sail On by the Commodores yeah it's I'm tossing you to the side oh it's a breakup song it, it, but he's doing the breakup it's time for you to go listen listen to that song and it's a sweet melody and oh my goodness yeah Oop, we lost you. Why did we lose you? 
Oh, look at there you are. There. You're there. I bet your mic's not plugged in all the way. Um. Check on your no on your clip. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I can hear you now. I can hear you now. Okay. So, so you guys, you see all the the cracking of the gesso on my workstation here, but I like to go through and just let it like almost let it do what it's going to do but then if it's not doing it enough or if I want some in a different area then I can just take something and all you have to do is like start it and it'll start cracking in that area. Shane Sellers I'm with you. Red Rubber Ball one of my oldie all time favorites. I It's a nice song and, and it's got a kind of British invasion-y sound to it mm -hmm. so but then you listen to the lyrics and you're like oh my gosh it's it's so sad. Is it so sad? It is. It is so sad. Yeah. The way you said that. Okay. So I want this to stay white, but I want to, I have a lot of tannins coming through anyways, though. So I think this is beautiful because I want it. It's going to look like some old piece of something that I found. I mean, it is an old piece of something, but we want it to look light and bright. I'm trying to figure out if I want to seal this or if I want to add some, so these, this is milk paint, but you don't have to use milk paint. You can use, absolutely use your talk paint. Pamela Culp Adair, sung by the cycle who toured with the Beatles at one time. Yeah, people forget the Beatles, when they did a concert, they sang maybe, maybe 50 minutes. 40, 45 minutes. It oh, was, so man. you had to have opening acts. So I didn't know they toured with them. Shane Sellers, Chuck Berry, My ding a -ling. Oh, yeah. That was just terrible. Which I just learned is the only number one Chuck Berry ever had. Right? And it wasn't, he, and he wasn't the first one to sing it and either. He, yeah, it's a cover. Yeah. It was a stupid little song. That he did live. That he did live. And it's his only number one. That is so sad. Now, look, I'm going to say something that a lot of people are going to get upset about. Oh, Lord, don't say it then. I have to. Why? Because it's in me, and if I don't, I'll explode. Oh, my gosh. You already I, got me in trouble last time we were alive. I'm not the biggest Chuck Berry fan. Oh, okay. You can say that. Uh, I'm, I'm not because, to me, all his songs sound alike. It's the same three chords over and over again. It's the same basic sentiment in all of his music. I, I know... Especially the 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 sixties rockers loved him. But for my money for the fifties, Little Richard was way more creative and and inv innovative. I, don't I would think anybody would disagree with that. I would much rather hear Little Richard than Chuck Berry. Chuck Berry was more palatable to a mainstream audience because he wasn't singing oh. aggressively. He wasn't singing inappropriately little richard except for little dingling apparently well that was no that was in the that might have been late 60s early 70s oh it was not a 50s tune so yeah i'm just not a huge chuck berry fan i can appreciate what he did it's just not my favorite okay so you're allowed to have your opinions but the, in music world that's Oh, those you, are fighting you, words. Yeah, you got to respect Chuck Berry, Little Richard, Jerry Lee Lewis. I I respect them. I just don't... Just don't like them. Yeah, Jerry Lee Lewis, kind of the same way for me, but that's because I don't particularly like country music and Jerry's rockabilly. Oh, okay, so it is more kind of... Yeah. I think most music probably is more... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? They're like bisects. Dice you know what I'm saying? You have country rock. You have, I don't think any music is just one thing. Okay. I'm just trying to add some, like, because y'all know I couldn't just leave it white. Y'all know I can't just do that. Uh, I'll even so. go you this far. I think, I mean, the Beatles, by far and away the most influential band mm -hmm. of the modern era. Definitely the second half of the 20th century. Um, you can make the argument maybe the most influential of the 20th century. Okay. Um, but Little Richard and the Kinks, I think, did more to further 
the more types of yeah the types of music because everybody was doing that she loves you hold my hand um you know uh what was the everly brothers wake up little Susie. you wake know up, little Susie. Yeah, they were all kind of doing that including the beatles who yeah. started with that and then you had little richard doing you know good golly miss molly and, good golly, miss molly. and, and you know I hear yes. you knocking and, and just shaking things up. And then in the 60s, the Kinks did the same thing. The Kinks were Kinks were 70s and 80s 20 years before. Yeah. And I think people kind of forget that. And, and it's easy to because they never were spectacular. Lola was probably their biggest hit. Um, but, man, You Really Got Me is a great song. It's... You know, anyway, you really got me going. Debbie Knudsen, you which this so may be my favorite comment so far of the night. Oh, Lord. It must be something he agrees with, Debbie. Well, no, it's because I could tell what she was trying to do. Mm -hmm. But spell check got a hold of her and just ripped her intentions away. <laughs> I agree. Little Rocket was beer than Chuck Berry. Oh, better. Yeah. Well, Little Richard was better, but it corrected her to Little Rocket. Oh, OK. Yeah. Uh, Shane Sellers, I agree about Chuck Berry and Little Richard. Saw Little Richard in the 80s. He was amazing. Yeah, he was still doing it. His gospel stuff is great. I mean, you know, because he found the Lord and, yeah. you know, his gospel stuff can rock. I, I'm just, I'm a big Little Richard fan. Okay. All right, Deborah Fusilier. Excuse me, Fusilier. You guys are just watching my madness today. I'm sorry. Sexual Healing, Marvin Gaye. That was a beautiful song. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, if you're eight, should we be singing I know, along? I know. I'm just being a dork. Yes, you are absolutely right. But I know. Yeah, we should not have been singing that song. My grandmother would get upset, but my mom never really, like... Mm -hmm. can, can we be totally honest? I know. Your mom was proud of winning wet t-shirt contests, honey. I know. And she would tell me all about it. I know. My mama was rough, y'all. I would take her to, like, we would go to the the wound clinic, and the nurses would fight over who was going to get to take care of my mom because they knew they were going to get a good story. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, no, no, I'll take care of her. No, I'll take care of her. I'm like, oh, Lord, y'all know she's going to misbehave, don't y'all? Yes. My mom has always been rough. And then as she got older and her... Um, Filter just got thinner and thinner. Oh, yes. <laughs> I was funny. I would meet people who used to work with my mom, and they would make me laugh. You know how when kids are doing something that they're not supposed to be doing, and they have a certain look at the, on their face? So they'd be like, I used to work with your mom, and they would all have that look, that mischievous look. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I don't even want to know. <laughs> Lori Scott, Marvin Gaye could do no wrong. Shane Sellers, Barry White's voice, anything. It wasn't inappropriate. I don't think Barry White ever sang anything inappropriate. No, I think she just liked his voice. Oh, I'm in a, a 100%. I'll give you a song that never really charted, but I really like from him, Rio. It's just a fun little, uh, it's got, what's what's the style of Brazilian music? Um, a samba? Is that Brazilian? Um, yes, I it's, believe so. I think that's Brazilian. Whatever whatever the predominant style of music is, it's got a little bit of that in it, but it's not heavy. And it's a great song. So, Yes, Tina from Reno. Tina Burke, hate time change. We understand. I know. Is somebody coming in and then they, 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 I know. We tried to make it easier for you guys so that you, I mean, you know, we would be on the, the same time we've been on for most of the places. Except for Arizona. Sorry, guys. Debbie Knutson sounds like my family. No filters. No, no filters. Your mom had a wonderful spirit about her. Oh, yeah. She was a beautiful person. No, no, no. By being in this. So she had had a double mastectomy. Yes. But she did not hesitate to tell me about, boy, when I had these, I would go to the bar and I'd win those contests. <laughs> She just loved it. And I'm like, what a great attitude. Yes. Even when my mom got breast cancer, I'm going to tell you. So I better not cry either and be mad at myself. I'm already starting. 
All right. So My I just, I just want to say. Uh, I have to tell the story now. You brought it up. Do, um, Jordan was born. And I think three days later, we, my mom was diagnosed oh, with breast okay. cancer. And I was really stressed out about it because I was like, how am I going to juggle right. all the things, right? Um, my mom was just so courageous. Like, David makes fun of me. He stressed, I mean, he like, because I'll tell him, like, I have wrinkles. Like, my mom did not have wrinkles. She was 73 and she didn't have wrinkles. I nope. think I have more than she does. Now. You don't have wrinkles. And I do have wrinkles, but... Um, it's because she just didn't worry. Like, legitimately. She just did not worry. I need a little bit of that because I stress out about everything. But um, she... <laughs> well, I somebody mean, in the family had to be concerned sometimes. This is true. Yeah. But, like, even she had me cut her hair off. She's like, I don't want to go through the stress of my hair falling out, so just cut it off. We cut her hair off. I mean, and because she was not stressed out about it, she did not have the nausea and the, thro and the vomiting up. She dealt with a little bit of weakness, but not, I mean, she went through six months of chemo and six months of radiation. I've just never seen anybody do it the way she did it. And it's because she just didn't stress about it. She didn't worry. It was just, I don't know. Um, I think we were all more stressed out than she was, or she led us to believe she wasn't stressed anyways. We never saw any evidence. Rita Burnett Laws, I love listening to my mom and her doctor. Did she fuss at him? My mom mm. used to fuss at her doctor. It was kind of funny. <laughs> uh, Lisa Vansell, I think Mike Nesmith was misunderstood as an artist. No, I love Nesmith. Okay. Our friend uh, Russ Kizmirchik, huge Nesmith fan. Huge. Huge. I mean, I like the monkeys. He loves the monkeys. Just mm. posted a photo with Mickey Dolenz, too. He just focused? focused yeah, yeah. apparently just saw Mickey somewhere. He's had photos oh. with all of them. Um, he's just Russ is a hey, tremendous, and I'm I'm right with him. Aqu Aquarius, Pisces, Capricorn, and Jones. One of my favorite albums. I, I love it. Headquarters so, is good too. Really quickly, so this is going to continue to chip, right? As long as it's like open. So I'm going to go ahead and seal it so that it will stop chipping because I want it. This is like where I want it to be. So I'm going to just do a quick seal of this, and I guess this is the only project we're going to get to finish tonight. Sorry, I thought I'd be able to make it through like more than this, but I don't think I'm going to be able to. Kathleen Hoovis, did the paint you added make the crack show up? Can we see a close up? Yes, let me seal it and um, dry it really quickly, and then I will show you guys um, a close up. And yes, you're going to be able to see the crackle easy, you know, once I added the color because it's going to fall into um, all those cracks and crevices, and you guys will be able to see them more. We finally get some warm weather and a bug goes by. Really? That's what happens. Really? Couldn't even just like lay dormant for another day. <laughs> They've been waiting. They're going to get frozen, <sighs> though. They're going to come out too early. I hope they do. No. Don't like bugs. I think we're going to get another freeze before we are. winter. Yeah, we will. But don't like bugs. No, no bugs. Isn't that what uh, Rudy used to call? No, bud. 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 And the guy on uh, Psych, everybody would say he was Bud. <laughs> I wasn't Bud. I know. That was not me. I'm just doing a quick seal. And one of the and this is a matte sealer. You guys know I love matte, right? I'm all, I mean, it's just my preference. Um, and so it'll still maintain the same look once this dries, but it'll be set. So I won't have to worry about it continuing to crackle. No, I think your audience played by the rules. Did they play by the rules? Well, we have very few inappropriate songs that they loved as kids. So <laughs> oh, that, no, babe. You should see the coast. There's a whole lot of Nobody's throwing them out answers. there. See, nobody wants to give up. Oh, yeah. I was listening to Eminem when I was <laughs> nine. What? Oh, yeah. I was listening to all. I mean, when I was, well, not when I was nine. Eminem didn't come out until I was older, babe. Pat Reed says she's never been able to get crackle to work. So this is not crackle. This is actually gesso. So I'm going to show you guys. So we're creating like actual physical texture. So it's not like just a shallow um, crackle. Like 
it's actually cracking. And because it's the product that I'm putting on and it's cracking, it's not like I put it on under the paint and the paint is crackling. The gesso is actually what I'm getting to crackle. And I was very intentional about something. I'm gonna show you guys something in a few minutes. I did each side a little bit different so you guys could kind of see the different ways that you could get it to crackle too. Shane, I just can't remember the name of the songs. Shane's already <laughs> given us a couple. <laughs> we know you're one of the cool kids in the back of the bus. Oh my gosh. I hate it sitting in the back of the bus with them bad kids back there. I, you know what? Doing stuff. My bad kids were, were great. It was a funny thing. I've always been kind of a straight arrow guy. Mm -hmm. And the bad kids who were smoking in the back, this is the 70s. Smoking was still bad back then. They were doing the other stuff, but they didn't do that on the bus. Yes. Um, they were they were welcoming to anybody. They were nice to me. See, I was a rule follower. They weren't doing anything to me necessarily. They just were misbehaving. No, they I were, generally sat in the first three seats on the bus. They were fine. They chatted with me. I I got along with all of the burnouts, for lack of a better term. Is that what you guys call them? That's the what burnouts? we called them. Yeah, the burnouts. I liked them. They were nice guys. I liked them better than the jocks. Jocks were jerky. The jocks were jerky. And I played ball. I was going to say, weren't you a jock, baby? No, I played ball. I was not a jock. Oh, there's a difference. I Well, I wasn't that good. Oh. <laughs> uh, Corinne Godfrey, how about a mirror in the bathroom? Oh, wait, is that a song, Mirror in the Bathroom? I'm assuming. Club Days, I sang different lyrics. Oh, I thought you meant like cracked like gesso on a mirror. Um, I don't know that song. Who does that song? Mirror in the Bathroom? You know what say? Oh, this texture is so yummy. And I didn't even do everything. Um, so I'm going to try to show you guys. So you guys can see this texture. I just went straight up and down. When I apply the gesso, you can see it better um, on the bottom where there's color, right? I'm trying to find my camera. Okay, there we go. My phone is actually making a shadow, so I hope you guys can see it. Um, but I just think it feels like a um, authentic texture, I guess. And so you guys will see me using this more and more. And I am not carrying it, but I've already signed up to start carrying it. But um, I, I'm not going to have it for a while. So if you guys want to start playing with it, you guys can order it from Lexi. She has it right now. I know some of you have already taken Lexi's class um, on patina. Where she uses this. You're off again. Am I off again? I, there's something. There, there's a bad wire there. there not be Check it. You're off still. Okay, how about there, there you go. It came back on. I think, I don't know, maybe I'm pushing it. I think you might be. I wonder if I'm pushing it off when I do something. Yeah. That's funny. Uh, Corinne says it's a song by The Beat. Is that is The Beat the same as The English Beat? Or is that two different bands? Because The English Beat covered Tears of a Clown in a reggae style of ska. Tears of a Clown. And it's really good. I like The English it's Beat. So um, somebody said the oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yolanda Jones back of the bus was fun. <laughs> what do you guys think of this texture? I just think this is so yummy now. Um, and it has so much character. I'm gonna stop before I ruin it, I think. Um, but this is just a little bit. I'm gonna let this dry completely. But now I think this is gonna be a nice light base it, compared to what it was when we started i do want to paint on some of the because i have some and i'm going to tell you guys if you buy the crack gesso and you use your brush with this product do not put it in a jar to soak i repeat do not put it in a jar to soak wash your brush i made the mistake it is the stinkiest smell i've ever smelled <laughs> it was so stinky ugh so I'm assuming there's something in this that made it sink like that. So um, don't leave your your brushes in water. Don't do it. All right, I'll give you one more inappropriate song before we leave. Yes. 
Uh, the principal of our grammar school told us none of us were allowed to sing or have copies of the song at school. Now, mind you, uh, I went to a parochial school. Yes. It was a religious school. At one point, our pastor did tell us that uh, Mick Jagger was sent by the devil. Oh, okay. So just take that for what it's worth. But but the principal was right on this one. Uh, the No-No Song by Ringo Starr. Oh, which is all about him doing drugs and then saying he can't do it anymore. Oh, okay. So, well, yeah, it, it was not appropriate for seventh graders to no, be singing. to be singing. Yeah. Ah! And Deborah Mastro, the monkeys were the best. I agree. I've made my wife sit through episodes of the show. This poor woman, I still think... And I still love you. No, I'm just kidding. I... I know. I think you should have to sit through the next um, fashion star. Today. I have many, many seasons worth. That was Project Runway, and that and was years ago. We were dating. That didn't count. You were trying to impress I me. I still like uh, the guy. Was it Gun? <laughs> Tim, Tim Gunn. Gun. Yes. Still like Tim Gunn. <laughs> we were dating. You were trying to impress me. That doesn't count. I know. It's true. Um, but I sat through it the other night. You sat through the end of an episode. Well, that's when I got home. I know. So I'm just saying. There's a whole nother But yes, the monkeys, I would put the monkeys. It may be my favorite television show. Really? Would it be the best television show? The best sitcom is either. I should have stippled this first. I'm sorry. Ooh. The Good Place has kind of moved into best sitcom. The Good Place. Have you guys watched The Good Place? It's hilarious. It's, it's we can't be a spoiler, though, baby. You can't tell. No, them. it's just that's a really good one. It ends well. It's a good sitcom. I used to say Dick Van Dyke Show was the best sitcom because it, it hit all the buttons. Carl Reiner was the showrunner. It's it's just everybody on it's great. Well, the one we've been watching lately, though, with Sheldon, that one's actually Young Sheldon good. is better than Big Bang Theory by a wide margin. Um... I would say Scrubs, but I still think I think I like the monkeys the best. You know why I like Scrubs? Because that is legitimately how my mind works. Yeah. Like, seriously. I get it. Just making movies all day long. But I would the add... Odd Couple. Lisa Vansell says The Odd Couple. It's a great show. Great show. Um, the first three seasons of MASH, after that, I think it falls off. Um, Happy Days when it was on film, not when it was uh, done in the studio, um, when they went to video. Mm. I think it's a better show. But from start to finish, when Scrubs changed networks, because the show had been canceled, so it was done, and then another network bought it mm -hmm. and said, let's do one more season, I, I don't count that. No. Because I think it ends perfectly... The with way the other it one. did, yeah. yeah. Good place might be the best. It's pretty funny. And then, like I say, Dick Van Dyke, Scrubs, Monkeys, my favorite, because Monkeys absurdist. Monkeys is like a a late sixties version of the Marx Brothers. Okay. A little chaotic, a little absurdist. They acknowledged they were a television show. They were constantly breaking the fourth wall quick cutaways. It was really so incredibly well written. Bob Rafelson just died too, I think. The uh, showrunner on that. Now when you say showrunner, what does that mean? The exactly? creator. Okay. That's what they call him in television. You're the showrunner. So it's you create it, you tend to be the first writer, and then it's your job to keep things going. Okay. So you're the executive producer, but the showrunner tends to get the profits because you created it. Oh. So that's why Larry David and Seinfeld, Jerry Seinfeld, are so rich, because they created Seinfeld. Oh, so then they are the ones who get the reap the. They get the benefit. Oh, you know, maybe you need to create a sitcom. I've tried. It has not gone well. It's <laughs> it has not gone well. Leave it to Beaver. I just know. I could not do the beef. You couldn't do the beef? No, nah, Eddie Haskell was the only one I liked on it because he was. Eddie Haskell was the bad boy. Exactly, but he was the only one that wasn't like milk toast. 
Everybody else was so nice and so sweet. And so even Lumpy Rutherford was nice. Come on. Your name's Lumpy. <laughs> no, Lumpy could have been nice. Couldn't do the beef. Stephanie Devine, I love Big Bang. I, I do too. I like it, but Young Sheldon's. Oh, I was going to say, we watched every, we've seen it twice, Stephanie. Yeah. Don't let them fool you. I like Big Bang Theory, but Young Sheldon's much. It actually is, it's really good. It's really, it's so well written. And I was so gonna, it's well written and the actors yeah. are good. I love the father. Yeah. I know, even when No he's... spoilers, we're only on season one. Oh, okay. All right, Pamela McDowell, going to ask a dumb question. No such thing. Why can't you use speckling or plaster to do the same thing? Does that work? Does that do the same thing? I can try it and see. Will spackle crackle? Look, will spackle crackle? Handy and Honey says Tim Conway was the best. And I think she's referring to Trisha Keaton. By the way, Handy and Honey on YouTube, I think, is referring to Trisha Keaton on Facebook saying Carol Burnett show was one of my favorites. I watched it. Kathy I Stein. actually love Carol and Burnett. You know why? Because all the women were always so prim and proper and she wasn't. I think that's why I liked her. I think she's funny. I think her show was great. Although I don't think Tim it was Conway was one of my favorites on her show. I don't think it was one of the best, but it was definitely great. I have, I, I'll say another thing that I'm not supposed to say. Oh, my. I I'm always afraid when he says that, y'all, because I don't know what he's going to do or what he's going to say. I was not in love with the Mary Tyler Moore show. Oh, okay. I liked it. It wasn't my favorite. I like. I preferred the Bob Newhart show. Because, again, a little more absurdist. Mary Tyler Moore was more a traditional sitcom. Mm. And it was good. But Bob Newhart show was a little weirder, and I liked that. A little bit. I think I let my stuff get a little too thick. And we are at an hour 34. Okay. So So just, I'm going to go ahead and dry this. Um, I will stage my cloche. That's about the only thing we've finished. We're yeah. going to be on these projects forever, you guys. Or maybe I'll just film myself finishing them so we can do another project. Because I'm ready to do something new. <laughs> Stephanie Devine. Eddie Haskell sat in the back of the bus with the burnouts. <laughs> he became a cop. He was a chippy. He was a CHP officer. Oh, a chippy? Yeah. Um, let's see. How about Doogie Howser? I'll be honest, I never watched it. I like Doogie Howser, too. It was it was during my I'm Raising Kids phase. Yes. So I, there's a lot of TV from that stretch that I didn't see. It was just one of the ones I didn't. Uh, Taxi. Taxi was great. Taxi was good. We watched a few Taxi episodes. I like Taxi. I, I know, I, but I'm wondering why we didn't finish watching him. Because it's... I, I'm a fan of the director of that show, James S. Burroughs. Mm -hmm. He's done tons of great TV shows. Um, he's a fantastic sitcom director. It just, it, it's a good show. Okay. I, I'll just kind of leave He's it at that. It it's a that. good show. You know what? I should have stippled on... Dang it. I think I'm going to... Because I'm just basically going over all the work we did last week but I think I'm going to stipple on a dark color and go back over the top of this with more of the the crack gesso yeah now now there's a lot coming in that I I have to be honest I'm just not a fan I'm not a fan of I appreciate but not a fan of Lucy <gasps> I love Lucy I love Lucy I appreciate for what it did it created the three camera sitcom um it created the husband-wife dynamic. It was it was innovative and brilliant. But eh, I liked it. It didn't do anything for me. I'm the same way with the honeymooners. Apparently, if you live in New York and you say I don't like the honeymooners, they'll throw rocks at you. Same with Abbott and Costello. Oh. I I just was not a fan of those shows. They're okay. I can watch them, but they're not my favorites. Do you have to use the heat for crackle? Deborah, I found that I get more crackle when I use heat. Yes. Frasier? I don't I like Frasier. Furniture uh, fornication by design. Slow down. Favorite taxi episode. It is a good one. 
Jim's going to get his hack license, which mm-hmm. is what you need to drive a cab. Mm-hmm. And they're like, what? Is, and he's taking the test and he's whispering over to Jeff Conway. Um, what does the yellow light mean? And Jeff Conway goes, slow down. What does a yellow... And he keeps saying, slow down. And he keeps getting slower and, sl- and slower. Oh, that's too funny. It was... Taxi's a good show. I, I can't I can't say anything bad about it. It just didn't it didn't jump at me like an odd couple did. Like Night Court was a good show. Night Court was fun. I like Night Court. Okay, we can go, baby, because I'm gonna I'm gonna actually let this dry. You know what? Who was that? Deborah was asking me. I'm gonna leave it, Deborah. I'm gonna see what happens to this side over here and see if it crackles on its own. Although I found that um, coaxing it with the dryer gets me a lot more crackling. Uh, but, um, so during the period of Frasier, because mm-hmm. they're talking about Frasier and those shows, yeah. which was uh, NBC's big Thursday night, Friends, Frasier, um, oh. Seinfeld, um, pick any of the others. Uh, what was the one with the girl from uh, Back to the Future? Uh, Caroline in the City... The other guy, there were just tons of shows. I preferred ne- um, news radio. News radio was funny. News radio was a smart, smart comedy. It was. And they had great comedians on there. Dave Foley. Look, Andy Dick is a mess today. But Andy sure. Dick was great on that show. He really was. Joe Rogan was tolerable on that show. Um <laughs> But who is it? Was it Candy Fox was the news anchor? I don't know. You know I don't know nobody's name. Baby. And, and Phil Hartman. I, you can't do better than Phil Hartman. I did good to know people Stephen I know Root was, was Mr. James. That's a great show. Okay. We better sign off, baby. It's late. I mean, it's not late, yeah. but we're like an hour and 40 minutes. He's, he's chatty today. So maybe Stephanie he, Devine, so Seinfeld, Master of My Domain. King of the Castle! <laughs> <laughs> we I watch Seinfeld. You're out? We thought you'd never break. It was John John. Now, do you know what Master of My Domain is? No. They have a bet. Who could go the longest without Oh yeah, I do remember that yeah. show. And yeah. Kramer because um, on the what's first her name day, lost. Yeah, on the first day, Kramer sees a naked woman across the street, and that's leaves it. the scene. They keep talking about the naked woman. He comes back in, slaps the money down, and goes, I'm out. <laughs> Already? Yes, I it's that remember. woman. I remember. I did. It's a I great episode. episode. Okay. So I will finish this later. I guess we'll finish this piece together. This is done. So I'll go ahead and put the cloche on there. Um, Which mold was that? And I'll stage the piece, huh? Which mold was that? This was the olive crest mold. Is the mold that I used to make this piece. All right. That goes on here. Oh, Trisha The Keaton. olive mold crest is really, I mean, I know I say there are a lot of good IOD products. The olive mold is really, really useful because you have this mold on here, the crest, and you have these beautiful laurels on here, and you also have other pieces. So you can build out like really beautiful stuff. And I see this being used on like a lot of, um, I don't know. I use this mold a lot. Somebody asked for a close up of the piece as well. A close up of this piece? Yes. So this is a close up of this piece. I, sh- I It's easier to show on the other camera. Let me see. Uh, Melissa Garibay, WKRP, absolutely oh, yeah. great WKRP show. It's funny. So, I hope the camera is like focused so you guys can see um, all the yummy chippiness. And this was just with the cracked gesso. I actually have other processes to get even more texture, but it's not quite this, in focus when you're too close. Uh, well, that's. I don't know how to do a close up. I know it's pictures. okay. I said it's just not quite in focus. Yeah. That's all. So, but this one is done. It's still a little damp because it's cool. I can still fill it. So I'm going to let this one dry completely. And then next week we'll come back and we'll meddle with this one. 
I did not apply heat to this side, but I applied heat to this side. So we'll look at the two sides and we'll compare the results. Um, and I think that's all that we have tonight. We I'm got, sorry, y'all. We, we got to get out of here. I, you're right. I've been chatting too much. So I know. We are, we're long, long. He's long-winded tonight. But, I am. Um, thank you guys so much for um, hopping on with us tonight. I hope we'll, we'll see you guys next Sunday. Do I have any announcements? I don't, huh? Mm -hmm. I'm Insiders. Right Hashtag insiders. Yeah, if you want to be a recycled insider, just put hashtag insiders in the comments. Um, I do send out, I should have sent out an email this week about the time change. I'll make sure and send out an email next week. Um, I send resources every month, and then you guys are kind of the first ones to hear any announcements or anything. Um, thank you guys so much for joining us. Remember, there isn't anything that you guys have seen me do today that you guys cannot absolutely do yourself.